ان الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد السلام عليكم uh, you learn fast man i like being in india i'm having a good time over here the food is really warm i'm getting by on one meal a day by the way that's enough alhamdulillah but i guess what i like the best over here really is you like in our country it costs a lot of money to go out and entertain yourself it does it's very expensive if you want to go uh, for entertainment let's say you want to take the whole family out could cost 2 or 300 dollars for a weekend just to go to six flags or disney world or disneyland something like that could cost a lot But just in the ride over here from the hotel, I saw all of the rides in one. Oh my god. How can you drive like this? I look at that window in the van as we're coming over. It's just I ah, ooh, and don't let the driver know you're scared. Big mistake, cuz then he's going to really do it to you. Whoo. Oh. Now our subject. They asked me to talk about Islam and terrorism or how to make a bomb in five easy lessons. Well, oh no, that's not it. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is the kind of attitude I get though. People come up to me and they say, "How come you Muslims is terrorists?" This is how it starts and it gets worse after that. So what I decided to do is to devise a way to be able to respond to these people in a very positive manner that would help them to get the real picture of Islam and at the same time hopefully they will come to Islam. Because consider myself and if you remember the story I was telling you last night I was anything except a supporter of Islam and yet I became a Muslim. So if Allah can change a person totally upside down like me, he can do it to anybody. So I decided to really work on this subject and see how to present the case. First and foremost is to remember that when these people come to you with these questions and talk to you like this, whether it's through the internet or if you're meeting them in person, you have to remember they're a human being like you are and they have fears. And if you'll recall Dr. Jaffer, Sheikh Idris was speaking on the subject of Islamophobia. He only gave half of the speech that night because he said he wanted to leave the time for other speakers. So I wish he would have given you the whole thing. And I feel shy to try to go in on top of the Sheikh's speech, but one of the things that he left out was when he usually tells us about that phobia. Phobia means a fear of something. Some people have a fear of heights to go up real high. That's called acrophobia. And some people could have a fear of uh, well i tell you what there's one that when uh, that's called hydrophobia the fear of water and that's when people have something called rabies hydrophobia because of the fear of water they can't drink water okay so and i have taxophobia when i come over here now that here is tax ecab phobia and when i'm back home it's tax period but in any case phobia means a fear of something And these people have a fear they said of Islam and they call it Islamophobia but actually they have a fear of what they don't know it's the fear of the ghaib so maybe we should call it uh ghaibophobia can we do that Bella can I do that mix the arabic and again anyhow he has so much about the arabic language when he gets up here make him tell you when you go to Q&A make him tell you all about this uh, the work that he's done in developing arabic for non arab speakers it's very easy to learn arabic with his courses by the way that was a free ad next one will cost you okay and now back to the program already in progress when you want to answer the question watch this somebody comes to you how come you muslims is terrorists just keep your cool and say Thank you for asking me about my religion. It will always totally unarm them. They will not be ready for that. 
They're expecting you to be like, uh, uh, or something, you know. But you say, smile, smile. Say, thank you for asking me about my religion. You ask me about Islam. What is Islam? It's an Arabic word. So we have to understand it in that language, not a translated language, right? So what is Islam? Islam has five words inside of it. Surrender, submit, obey, sincerity, and peace. And he's going to be going, huh? Because he wasn't ready for that. And you tell him, in our religion, it's important for us that we always have to tell the truth. We can go to hell for lying. And besides that, you could catch me if I lied anyway, because we have all of our scripture, it's still preserved. Even if I make a single mistake, somebody was just telling me a few minutes ago about a mistake I made the other night. And you can do that real easy because our scripture still exists. We still have it. The Quran is totally as it was 1400 years ago in the Arabia. Additionally, we have all of the Hadiths and teachings of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, preserved for centuries and centuries. So there isn't any two kinds of Islam. There's only one understanding. Islam is about this. Submitting and surrendering and obeying God in sincerity and peace. And if you didn't understand that, then you won't understand the rest of what I'm going to tell you. But for sure you have to understand it describes your relationship between your Creator. So Islam is immediately saying there must be a God. And we say Allah because it suits Him much better than your word God. Because your word God only has this little g for any kind of a God and a big g for the big God. But if I'm talking, you don't know if I meant the big g God or the little g God. So when we talk about it in Arabic, it's nice. Because for Arabic, they have a lot of words, many words for sword, many words for horse. And certainly they have words to describe the religion of Islam. The word in Arabic for God is not Allah, it's Elah. And when you make God plural, you put an S after it. But it's real clear in the Arabic when you make it plural, Awliha. You can hear it. Allah. Awliha, ilaha, these are big differences between them, right? They'll go, yeah. So you have to understand that when it becomes Allah, this means something. It cannot be made plural, and it's not genderized. So therefore, the God we're talking about has a name called Allah, and it means the only one, not male, not female, and can never be made plural. And because it comes from a root, ilah, which means something to be worshipped, you can literally say the name indicates the only one worthy to be worshipped. You see where I'm going with this, right, as I'm talking to him. I got off the subject of the terrorism, didn't I? But now I'm going to bring it back and tell him, do you know that people, human beings, have always been able to commit terror against each other or oppression? It's called bulum in the Arabic language. People have always had this capacity. It's not something that was just invented so that Bush could get elected. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to attack anybody, but just happened to mention that. Just so you know, human beings have always been able to kill each other. Since the time that there were two boys, sons of Adam, they were able to kill one another. One killed the other one, yes or no? That happened. And since then, people have been killing each other like crazy. And it's horrible. But who's the best one to tell us about this subject is not another human being, but God himself. Is that right? Because he made us. So he has sent people to us to warn us about the way we act here and the way we're going to be in the next life. We call them prophets or ambia, nabi, Rasul, okay, it doesn't matter, but you get the idea, they're prophets. And each of them, they come with a message. Some of them came with books. And when Moses, for instance, came, he told his people, worship God alone, don't worship anybody else. There's no gods beside God. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me, first commandment. All right? They'll go, yeah. All right. But what happened... When Moses was on Mount Sinai. And that they already knew they're not supposed to worship anybody but God. Didn't they know that? But when he was on Mount Sinai, what did they do? They made a golden calf or not? And it's in their book. It's in the Old Testament. Don't worry. It's the same story. It's there. It's in the book called Exodus. 
which means to leave because they left Egypt. All right. Just as they disobeyed their prophet, and we were bad boys and girls. So likewise, when prophets come, this is the way people treat them. They get bad treatment. But they still have the same message. Worship your God alone without any partners. And that's really all Islam is about. It, there's rights and limitations. Right after we talk about the worship of the one God, the next biggest thing is about rights and limitations. But for sure, you have to understand, this is not from a human being to another human. This is from the Creator to the created. This is from the manufacturer. Hmm? So when he sends down a book or a revelation, you can think of it like what? Owner's manual. Ah. And just like the Jewish have their Torah, which was the owner's manual during the time of Moses, certainly you would recognize that when Jesus came, peace be upon him, that he had revelation that supersedes what came before, kind of like 3.2 or 3.4 version coming out, right? So when he came, didn't matter what they had anymore, he's the one to tell them what's to do. He's the man, right? In fact, he called himself that, son of man. Just thought I'd make that point real clear. It's in the Bible. Now, so when Muhammad wasallam came, he did not say, I have a new religion. He didn't say, guys, worship me. In fact, he was a very austere person. He did not have a lot of wealth. He wasn't trying to, you know, gather up a lot of money. So, this came with him. Now is when you introduce the Quran. It's called Quran. Now in Texas, a lot of people mispronounce it. They call it Koran. But it's Quran. But regardless of what you call it, it doesn't mean a book. It doesn't mean like the Bible. Bible comes from the word Biblios in Kone Greek, which means a book. And by the way, the word Bible, like we said last night, it's not in the Bible. But the word book, Kitab, is in here. Trinity, not in the Bible. But it's in here. And it says, don't do it. The wrong way to go. This gets them thinking. You're stimulating them as you go along. Now, sometimes you wouldn't give them the whole thing, but you take your time and let them see that you're a human being just like they are. This is very, very important. More important than what you say is what they see. Because this is how they're going to perceive Islam from you. That's, you're their contact. You're our salesman. You're our representative in the field. And you've got to be up to date. And you've got to be up to snuff. And you've got to be doing your thing. You see what I'm saying? Everybody with me? You've got to be the best Muslim you can be. So remember that. And if they disrespect you, do not disrespect them. And remember, somebody better than you and somebody better than me was highly disrespected by his own people. Yes or no? And did they throw stones on him and he bled? And when he had a ch if somebody throw a stone on me, okay, and then you tell me that they, Allah is willing to put a whole bunch of stones on them, like a whole mountain. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, the Rahmat al mean, which is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He's the mercy to the mankind. And what did he do? He prayed for them. Which is following the same idea of Jesus, peace be upon him, who taught his people the same thing, to live in peace with people, even when they're aggressive to you, that you show this peace back to them. And so we do the same thing. By now he's really thinking about it. When you're talking to this person, now you can ease into the subject of terrorism. Because they need to know what's Islam first. Does it say... Anywhere in the Bible, because this is the book that most of the Christians are working out of, is their Bible. Does it say anywhere in the Bible about going to war and destroying people? Well, they probably don't know, but the answer is absolutely yes. If you go to the book of Genesis, it, it's called the Rape of Dinah. Go look it up. Go look it up. When the tribes, or the sons of Jacob, got in a little bit of a problem, one of their daughters was with the Mushrikeen, so instead of just going over and asking her to come back, which they did that, but they saw there was a resistance, she didn't want to go, and the boy didn't want to give her up. So they decided to go against him. But then they saw the Mushrikeen had a bigger tribe, 
So they said, oh, we can't do that. The Mushrikeen, however, wanted to strike peace with them. They made agreement.